Hey guys, it's Ollie from Rad Season. I'm super stoked to be joined by the adventure madman himself, Wade Holland. What's up? Uh, how are you, man? I'm great, man. So good to see you again and catch up here. You too. Uh, yeah, so th thanks for coming on Rad Days. Uh, to give everyone a bit of an introduction about what we're doing, Rad Days is a adventure series that we're running, looking at different uh, outdoor adventures, sports, action sports and essentially rad things to do all over the world and wait yeah. you, you, you're over in LA right yeah man I'm uh right here in Los Angeles kind of on the east side of the city so we got great tacos and the San Gabriel Mountains right behind me so a um, bunch of fun stuff most people think of Los Angeles as just like you know beaches palm trees but there's a lot more out here that I've been lucky enough to discover over the past few years yeah man because I, I remember when we were, we were last speaking you were sort of saying all the different things that you can do in, in in los angeles and you know when people think about it they just think about the movies and you know maybe maybe heading down to the beach but uh, or and, and and disneyland but there's so much right um yeah i mean what what are some of your favorite things would you say yeah man you're right there's disneyland out here but mickey mouse is getting way more rad than people realize i can promise you that <laughs> uh but it's true man i think uh, you know, most people think of Los Angeles, like you said, is kind of Hollywood um, yeah. and then sort of the beach culture, which, of course, there's there's rad surf and skate out here. But there's a whole other section of Los Angeles uh, with mountain culture that uh, I think it's kind of overlooked so much. And being a, a, a dude from Montana, when I moved out here, I was like everyone else uh, who, when you hear of Los Angeles and the outdoors, those two usually don't mix as much because that you just don't think of it as being an outdoor market. Uh, but right away, I just kind of started exploring these mountains right behind my home here, the San Gabriel mountains. Uh, I heard there was a 10,000 foot peak within like 30 minutes from where I lived. I couldn't believe that there was a 10,000 foot peak that close to me in LA. Um, so I just started getting out and exploring, going on hikes, going biking. Um, and before I knew it, I was even skiing at a local little hill 45 minutes from my home. So quickly I started realizing that there was way more to the outdoor scene here that ever gets talked about. And I started meeting locals uh, who have grown up here their whole life and said, yeah, you know, it's it's a gem, but no one really talks or knows about it. And even people who live here in LA don't really even know about it just because um, you usually don't move out to LA for the outdoors. Like people are moving to these other uh, meccas whether it's like Colorado or Utah or Montana, they're moving there for the outdoors. You usually don't hear people doing that for LA. Um, so I think that's kind of what makes it so beautiful too, is that it stays kind of under the radar. Nice. And were you, were you sort of seeking it out then when, yeah. when you first moved over? Yeah. So when I first moved out here, um, I'll start kind of going through some adventures and you can kind of point me where we want to go with it. But right away, um, I heard about, you know, Griffith Park is sort of the, uh, the the main area right close to Los Angeles. It has the Hollywood sign, but it's a huge section of wilderness. And I didn't know that. I had read that there, that area was considered urban wilderness. So I said, all right, I got to go check this out. So I started hiking along uh, a bunch of these trails. And the deeper I got, the more I realized, like, wow, no one's coming back here. Like, it's me and not like that's it. Um, and, and, you know, everyone hikes the Hollywood sign, you'll see that, but, yeah. uh, there's so much more within Griffith park. And, uh, I learned that Griffith park is actually the largest section of urban wilderness in all of North America, uh, which is a crazy fact, but it's the, an urban wilderness means that there's enough, uh, local wildlife living there, uh, away from human involvement. Like there's a population of mountain lions that live in Griffith park. Um, <laughs> crazy right so it's crazy so and you go out there and you see it like it is right in hollywood so it's kind of bizarre but once you start hiking into griffith park and it's super accessible so i always list that for someone who's like just coming out to la want to get outside go to griffith park yeah. um easy to get into um and you can get you get incredible views like incredible sunset views um anywhere you're at the park you'll be able to see the hollywood sign uh, but again, you can get back to some pretty cool hikes. Um, so for hiking wise, I would say like Wisdom Tree is a, I don't know how specific you want me to get on this, man, but there's some cool stuff uh, just all in Griffith Park. Nice. 
And um, and what about then sort of looking at skiing? So you you said that there was like a small hill yeah. close to you? Yeah, man. Uh Mount Baldy is like I'm putting that on my list is like one of the coolest uh kind of little gems of Los Angeles, Southern California. I would even say maybe the United States is a ski hill. And the reason I say that is because uh, it kind of embodies the old school spirit of skiing. Uh, there's nothing fancy about it. It's not the glitz and glamour, uh, affordable skiing, uh, but you get great skiing. And you would, again, never think that being yeah. in Southern California. Uh, most people think of like Mammoth, Big Bear, um, and of course, those are those are great places to ski. But the reason why Mount Baldy is so special is because number one, it's forty five minutes from Los Angeles. Uh, number two is it's so accessible and affordable. I mean, thirty five dollar lift tickets. Like, come on, how are you going to beat that? Uh, and when it does snow, I mean, I know that's kind of that's probably the biggest uh, hurdle there is it. It does snow there. Um, because you get up to 10,000 feet. So that's the, that's the thing there is like, even if it's not snowing in Los Angeles, Mount Baldy does get some decent snowfall because yeah. you gain elevation really quickly. Um, but obviously, you know, it, it doesn't get the crazy dumps that you see in some of these other uh, places around the world. But when it does get snow, not many people ski there. So you're almost like guaranteed to get fresh snow, fresh tracks, um, and that's beautiful. Like for $35 to get like powder skiing 45 minutes from Los Angeles, uh, that in itself is something phenomenal that I would never have thought existed out here. Yeah. That's insane. Yeah. And, and coming, coming from Montana, like, I, I know you're, you're a bit of a keen, uh, mountain biker. I mean, what, what have you discovered bike wise around yeah. where you are? Yeah, man. The mountain bike scene here rips. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, it's the truth. Every time I go out into, so the San Gabriel's um, is the mountain range kind of right on the east side of Los Angeles. Um, they, they're like probably 15 minutes from downtown LA. Um, they're like 10 minutes, yeah, 10, 15 from, I guess, where I'm at. And uh, they go straight up. So the thing about the San Gabriel's that make it such fun mountain biking is uh, they're close to Los Angeles, but you gain elevation really quickly. So they're not really gradual mountains. Like you gain uh, a few thousand feet in elevation just in like a few miles. And so they go straight up. So for mountain biking, uh, you get a crazy workout, just like huffing up these mountains. And then once you get to the top, uh, the single track downhill is so flowy, so fun. Um, the local bike community here. Uh, it does exist because anytime I go out there, you'll see a bunch of like fun berms and little jumps, really playful stuff that uh, I had no idea was even a part of like Southern California culture. Yeah. Um, and the thing that I think makes it so cool too, that, that hit me right away is, you know, I grew up as a, you know, from Mo in, in Montana, uh, I lived in Colorado for many years and the mountain biking trails there get super crowded because mountain biking is such like a prevalent sport in those markets. Uh, so that means like you're sharing the trail with a bunch of people. Um, you got to go at certain times to avoid the crowds here in Los Angeles. Like you never see anyone on these trails. That's it's really like this local little secret that I keep finding out about, you know, there's 14 million people out here in Los Angeles, but I think, this culture is so much based off of like, honestly, like the majority of people's like gym culture. So when they want to yeah. go exercise and work out, they're going to like LA fitness, but fewer people are saying like, I want to go in those mountains. I'm going to go mountain bike over there. So when you do get out and do that, you're, you're, you know, few and far between you're, you're one of the few. So for me, once I started mountain biking, it was just a, almost like a spiritual experience because I was like completely alone. Uh, high in the mountains looking out over this city of 14 million people and there was just no one around me and it was great mountain biking too like the trails are are serious man like i'm getting in some pretty good single track um like no fall zone stuff like some of the stuff you don't just go mess around with like you gotta know what you're doing with mountain biking and i had no idea that that level of mountain biking was even possible out in los angeles that's awesome and 
doing like going on those trips and going mountain biking have you discovered any other things whether it's like you know different like hiking locations or climbing or, or things like that yeah man um the cool thing too is like there's uh there's a bunch of little hot springs kind of okay. all, all around sort of uh the socal area and so um there's some in northern california that i've been to um kind of right by mammoth that are really mm -hmm. neat but there's definitely some in socal that i have my eye on that i want to go explore to like there's some that like are an eight, 10 mile hike in to get to these. Um, but there's just like these little uh, backcountry hot springs sprinkled around the area that you can get to. Some of them are closer than others, but that's a really cool piece. I think to the equation out here is, you know, there's the, the biking hiking, but if you can bike or hike out to a hot spring, yeah. um, you know, that makes it even better. Right. Nice man. Yeah. So it's cool, man. It's, it really is something for me that I, I keep finding more and more. Like you just, my, my advice is like, you just have to go out and um, the more you're just out kind of experiencing it for yourself, the more you see, like I was biking the other day and came across this, like, oh, like, and I, and I was deep, man. I was probably like 10 miles back. And there was this like abandoned little like 1970s Volkswagen bug car, but like totally abandoned deep in the hills. And I'm like, how did this ever get back here, man? <laughs> like, you can't drive this back here. So it's it's really cool that you find these, uh, it's almost like, you know, it's like these urban artifacts that get put back into the wilderness in, in California. And some people might be like, all right, that takes away from the experience. But I think that adds to the experience because that's like LA, right? Like Los yeah. Angeles is like human development, commercialization. And then you have like little random artifacts of that like sprinkled into the outdoors and the wilderness uh when you're out exploring in socal so i dig it man I, I i think it's it's a unique place that you you don't um yeah you're not going to get that if you're out in colorado or if you're in montana and being you know such a uh like i feel like i'm such a montana dude true like through and through in so many ways uh but now really digging into the outdoors in Los Angeles, it's given me a whole new perspective and appreciation for this this market with getting outside. Nice. And are, are there any other places that you want to kind of go a bit deeper on or, or, or try and discover? I mean, you must be kind of finding new things the whole time is sort of the... Yeah, yeah man. So one thing I, I want to get a little deeper on is, um, so I, I've been out to the Channel Islands a couple of times and the Channel Islands is a string of islands right off the coast of California. So right kind of by like Ventura, mm -hmm. uh, Santa Monica. And most people think of like Catalina Island when yeah. you think of uh, the Channel Islands because of like, you know, if you remember the movie Step Brothers and there's the Catalina wine. Wine mix it. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> So like everyone knows of Catalina Island from that, yeah. um, but that's the one island that's like commercialized. Um, there's like shops and stuff on it, but north of that, um, there's a, the rest of the islands, and five of those islands are a national park. So it's the Channel Islands National Park, um, completely protected. And I think a lot of people don't even realize that that section is like, it's a national park you can go into um, and it's true wilderness. Like you get out there, yeah, no development, no commercialization. And the wildlife is amazing, man. Like every, I've been out there twice now and we've kayaked it. And so you can like kayak around the islands. Um, we've seen humpback whales, dolphins. Um, there's like 145 endemic species there. So species that don't exist anywhere else in the world, except right there on the Channel Islands. So we saw this like little island fox that was running around and like that fox only exists right there on that island and nowhere else in the entire world. Um, so there's tons of species, 145, that, that you'll see or you might get lucky enough to see. And to me, that's so incredible, man, that like you're right, you know, right in, like at 30, 30, 45 minutes off the coast of Los Angeles. And um, yeah, there's these species that it's like they call it the Galapagos of North America. Uh, and it really is like you feel like you're transported into a whole other world. Um, they have these uh, incredible kelp forests. So people will like scuba or snorkel through these kelp forests. Uh, that's, that's something awesome. I 100 percent want to be doing. Um,
because it's uh, you see these kelp forests and they're like 80 feet long these huge kelp vines it's crazy man wow so, yeah cool man so it's tight man like again between the the ocean side of it the marine life um i definitely want to go a little deeper into kind of exploring some of that because i'd say water for me is still a little bit newer like i'm a montana dude man I, i'm from like inland <laughs> area uh so that stuff uh i, I want to get a little bit deeper into uh but in regards to the mountains out here I think I connected to that immediately because I really am such like a mountain dude. And then coming to SoCal, you just don't think of mountains yeah. and, and then realizing like, Oh, there's very real mountains right behind me and I can bike, I can hike, I can ski, I can camp all the stuff I could do in Montana just with like, you know, a different environment, a different plant life, different little animals. Uh, and I dig that, man. I, I think it's important for people to experience different places like that because it just opens your perspective on on the natural world. And it's very rad out here, I can tell you that. Nice, dude. Good yeah. stuff, man. Well, yeah, I, like, yeah, I, I've got to get over there and we should do some trips and get out. Come of on out, man. And... Come on out. I was going to ask, do you, do, you, uh, do you ski or snowboard? I know you bike. Um, I snowboard, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, bring the board, man, and I will take you to Baldy because I promise you, it's a it's a gem, man. Like I I showed some of my friends in Montana some of the ski clips of me at Baldy, and they were just like, "Wait, where is this?" Because the the weird thing about Baldy is like when you load the lift right at the bottom, there's like no snow, so there's like uh like it, it's almost like desert vegetation. You'll see like you'll see like agave plants. And then you're like getting on the lift, but you don't, you don't click into your skis. Like they put the skis on the chairlift behind you and you're just like on your boots going over almost like desert plant life. And you're like, where am I, man? This is crazy. But you see the lift, like it goes up and you're like, oh, I guess I'm going up quite a ways. And then you go up on this first lift and then you start, you know, getting into some, you see the you see the plants start to change. You get higher and higher. Yeah. So the plants become more like pine trees. And then you get up to kind of the midway point. And then there's snow. And then you take the lift up further to the very top. And at the very top, man, you can, if it's a clear day, you can look out and see the Pacific Ocean. If it's really clear, you can look out and see the Channel Islands. And then that view alone makes the day. And yeah. then if you've got good snow, that's just bonus um but again there's like no one up there man so you're you're bound to get some fresh snow if it's snowed in the past like few weeks just because it never gets skied out so for me that's special man coming from montana or colorado where like skiing has become so commercialized and it's like a 120 dollar lift ticket and wow. it's you know super crowded with um it's more result culture resort culture yeah. And, and and I grew up skiing in an era where it was like hot dogger, uh, dirt bag culture, where it was like, <laughs> you know, uh, cheap ski tickets, um, nothing fancy. Like you're up there to ski and that's it. It's not like yeah, yeah. spas and, and like opera ski at the bottom. It's just like, get whatever equipment you have and go to the hill and just rip it up. Have a fun day. Yeah. Um, and that's Mount Baldy, man. It's like real low key. Like lifties are probably having beers. It's just like, it's, it's, it's OG ski culture, which I resonate with. Nice one, man. Yeah. So come on out, man. I will take you there. <laughs> I'm there. Yeah. I love it. I love it. So, Cheers, dude. Yeah, man. 